But yeah, I mean, I mean, th that type of controversy is a little tough to swallow. Yeah. But do you think you could have handled that a little bit better when you were younger? Or is it you're handling that better now? I'm handling it better now. When I was younger, it might have been a little different. See, Some th chair throwing? Uh, yeah, a little bit more hood, no lie, Charles. You know, I, I, that's the mentality I was growing up to and raised to, not to be proud about it now, you know what I mean? But it did make me the man I am today, you know? It uh, got me through a lot of, you know, I've mean, been through a lot of problems and troubles back in the days, you know, where I was a different man back then. Right. Even though I had the guidance of Crew Walter helping me, you know, and, and, and kind of guiding me the way he can, I still did my own thing, you know? Because uh, the way I grew up was a different lifestyle than normal, right? So I was introduced to a lot of different things like the gang life and so on and that, right? Right. As like my pops growing from from my pop we'll go back to my younger age, right? When I, are we in, we're, Yeah, yeah, we're do, we're okay. doing it, bro. Go back to my younger age when I was a kid, right? My pops, I grew up my dad was in prison his whole life, you know? So my weekend visits, literally I've been to almost every prison in California, out of state, everywhere you can think of on, on the weekend visits, you know? That was my weekend in the backyard. I had the yard, you know? Right. A bunch of prisoners out there, you know what I mean? And back then when you're young, you know, even though my dad didn't want me to kind of go that way, he tried to guide me as much as he can, but that was the way I seen him. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like you get influenced in that ways, and then my uncles and my cousin, you know, you kind of get, you kind of just, end up adapting to that lifestyle to, I don't want to say to survive, but it's to fit in, you know what I mean, at that time, that's my friends, those are my people around that time, so, you know, I grew up in a little different era back then, you know, thank God for Crew Walter guiding me and never leaving me, staying with me and keeping on my ass and keeping me in the gym, I was able to grow up and become a better man, and now that I have kids, I don't want nothing to do with any of that lifestyle, I want them to understand that I don't even want them to know about that lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want them to get introduced the way I was, you know, because I don't want them to feel like this is the cool thing, you know? I want them to see everything else in life with what life is really about, you know? What opportunities you really have if you make it for yourself and if you really want it. You got to want it, you know, and you got to believe. If you believe it, the sky's the limit. Bro. But, the but the don't limit. you think, though, the era that we grew up in, like in the 80s and the 90s, uh -huh. it was almost automatic for a dude Definitely. Yo, man, I got to rep fisticuffs, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm That's right. to prove myself to, to yeah. myself, yeah. to chicks out there. Yeah, of course, in that area, yes, yes. Back then, it's a whole different area. Right, because now, now you know it's like they're now happy the with like... Now the are in skinny jeans and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, but, and they're happy with like 30 likes yes. or 80 uh -huh. likes. Now it's about what, who's following what or how many followers I got and things like that, you know what I mean? That's the cool crew. But yes, in our era, definitely, that what. That was what we were introduced to, you know what I mean? That's what it was. 90s was a time of gangbanging, you know what I mean? To be honest, no right. lie. That was so the method that's what, for growing know, up. Yeah, growing up in that era. But it also, it also wastes a lot of my time in life, you know, being in and out of jail as a juvenile to an adult, you know what I mean? And, and, and growing up in that era, as well, I was almost, it was like a cycle, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's honestly true how they say it, you know what I mean? It's a cycle in that, in, in that where you're getting in, it depends on your influence and who you're around. That's who you're going to be, basically, you know? Basically, it's like, Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and, and that era, yes, that's what that was the cool guy. You know what I mean? We, we, we were the cool kids, you know? I want to pick your brain though. Is like with between Africans and African Americans, there's a big gap. There's completely different folks, right? Uh huh. But with Mexicans from the motherland of Mexico versus Mexican Americans, how big is that gap? You, like from, the, from, from what you see. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, here, uh, it's it's just a different, even though they kind of deal with each other on business ends, you know what I mean? And other business likes and stuff like that. Right. It's it's a different lifestyle here, just Americanized, you know, Mexican-American, right? Right. So, I mean, even though a lot, there's a strong Mexican heritage and background in a, lot of our, in a lot of our families, it's not there, you know what I mean? And, and you got the Southsiders and you got the Border Brothers, sure, you know what I mean? Or sure. the cartel and, and, and the homies, you know, and the Sureños or the Nateños and, 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 and the Border Brothers, you know? So it's, it's different, but it still kind of rolls together. Even in, in jail, we roll together, you know what I mean? That's just how right. it goes. That when it comes down, when stuff cracks off, you're going to be, the bison's are going to roll with us and so are the, you know, the woods and all, so on and so on, yeah. Right. Let, yeah. Me, let me just do a quick pause. We'll keep rolling. Is that... Is that drill going to be going through? Oh, no, John. John, can we not do the drill? Yeah, thank you, brother. Right. And then as far as for background noise for people talking. Yeah, just let them know. Yeah. Keep it down right here, guys. All right? Cool. And I hope he's not going to drill. Okay. But, like, 
So when you when you enter in like in the fucking pinta and mm-hmm. then isn't there tension like yo this is this is a Mexican American dude this is like between no no and in jail the, they took care of the you. homies running the homies running and everything in jail okay so that means homies mean the outsiders they run it on sure you know what I mean it's, it's just what it is it's it's, a, it's the majority of us you know what I mean so there's numbers it's a numbers game in there you know so with mean? with training in Muay Thai because you started at 11 right yeah uh huh. Did you go through the phase of like I'm gonna use this to fuck people up, and then or or were you already like well oh, I this boxed is martial at a, culture. I boxed at a younger age with my pop you know before okay. my pops passed away that's how I got into to fighting boxing and stuff like that so I did a little bit but I never really dedicated myself to it you know I just did it because uh, I liked it my dad liked it and he was around so after whenever he was out we he taught he taught boxing in the Santa Fe Springs gym and we would train out there. Yeah, almost every day, you know what I mean? He brought all the kids, uh, kids from church because he would be trying to go to church, you know what I'm saying? When he would be getting out, he would try to do good. Sure. Uh, he brought them in, let them train for free, all that stuff, you know what I mean? So I boxed back then and then I just uh, got introduced into Muay Thai after my father passed away. When my father passed away, um, I wanted to do something and I didn't have nothing to do. I, uh, I ended up finding out about this gym in Pasadena and that's where I met Walt. And that was it. Well, that was it. I so, found love. I was literally uh, taking this fitness class, right? I was doing this fitness class on the bags, and I was watching crew, and those guys, they're in the ring like this, and they're kicking pads, and they're doing real Muay Thai, elbows, knees, and I was like, fuck. I stopped literally training, and I'm looking at him. He sees me. He's like, you want to hop in the class? I'm like, can I? He's like, yeah. So I hop in the class, and I was getting kicked and kneed, and I was like, I got to learn this. You know what I mean? I got to learn right. this. And then my mentality, too, is never like to to learn martial arts to kick someone's ass. I loved it because that was what I loved. I loved to learn something new, you right. know? And, and I, even growing up, I never wanted, to, I wasn't the one out there looking for fights. Don't get me wrong, I handled it when it came to me, right? But I never wanted to go out there looking for fights. You can ask anybody, even people that grew up with me from high school to elementary, I was friends with everybody. And that's just how I am. I'm friends with everybody, I'm cool with everybody. Unless you disrespect me or cross the line, it's a different story, you know? Right. Back then, if we were enemies, that's a different story, you know what I mean? But everybody else, I'm cool, we're, I, I, that's just how I am. I'm a people's person. You know, I love people. I love to be around people. I like to have my friends. That's just how I am, you know? So I never went in there trying to kick someone's ass. For, for me, back in the days, honestly, if someone was messing with a kid that I thought was helpless, I would fucking tell them, you know? Right. A lot of my buddies and shit like that would play with them. I'd smack, what's your problem? For what? What, what? what do you have to prove a point? Right. There's no point to prove if you already know something, you know? So for me, I never try to use it to like be a bully or to beat people up or use it. I've used it because I found love with the sport, especially martial arts. Muay Thai I found love with. Boxing I love because you know, you get to hear, you get Machismo, to move. I, I still love boxing, right. you know, and that's what it is. You see a lot of the greatest fighters there in the heart, you know, and then you follow a lot of Mexican boxers. I do, you know what I mean, growing of up course, and man. all that. So if I found love with boxing, but Muay Thai is just, I got to use all, everything from my elbows, my knees, my kicks, everything. And I just, I found love with it, you know. I didn't know how to use elbows, knees and kicks and I was getting, fucking hammered you know so i was like right. i gotta learn this i gotta learn this shit but for for and and we'll, we'll delve out of the mexican-american culture pretty uh-huh. soon but is boxing still as strong or has mma you think created much noise and because because for for poor both post catholic filipinos uh-huh. and latinos yeah we looked into boxing first oh yeah because it's yeah. a it, it's a struggle man sport oh yeah yeah definitely. but has it changed and shifted you feel to mma or is it just as prominent still i honestly feel that a lot of it, a, a, a lot of people a lot of eyes have shifted to mma boxing is right. coming back though it's coming back with it a majority is. there if you can see all the, they've had a lot of great matchups before i felt like it was dying a lot of people felt that you know and mma was rising canelo triple g exactly now now we got triple g we got Golovkin, we got a lot of lot of great fighters out there now you know what i'm saying right uh we got a, a timothy bradley and pacquiao even though pacquiao's still a legend i think timothy bradley is actually his caliber of boxing is a lot higher now if you see he's actually fighting with intelligence is his mind he's using his he's using his feet work he's being smart he's not sitting there trying to brawl um there's a there's a lot of boxing is coming back but yes muay thai is growing it's taking over and muay thai M- i'm sorry mma is growing and MMA has helped Muay Thai grow as well. Right. So it's growing together. You know what I'm saying? It, it, a lot of people didn't understand about Muay Thai really until people started getting into MMA. Getting into MMA. They're like, I got to know stand up. If you're fighting MMA, you got to have stand up. There's no way you're going to go in there just in the ground. You've seen even some of the best black belts have gone in the ground and they got in ground and pound or knocked out for So they got to know something. Exactly. You know, everybody's a black belt until they get hit. When you get hit, you can drop back down to a blue or purple, is what they say, right? Okay. Well, let me ask you something technical, because mm-hmm. in BJJ right now, the revolution is 
you know, they're trying to go against the point system. They want to go for submissions because that's the legit way yeah. to see a winner. In Muay Thai, when you do like those short cutting, like cow socks, cow mm -hmm. hood, when you do like those short cutting elbows instead of the damage, is that like cheating versus like a strong elbow? Like, is that satisfying to a fighter to cut someone up and then, oh, I won because I cut him up versus like a true. Uh, like, like a knockout elbow right. is what you mean. Um, I, honestly, I feel, yeah, I mean, Muay, that's Muay Thai technique. Sure. So if I cut him, that's what I did my job, right? But I, for me, if I just cut him and I was losing that fight, I'm not going to be satisfied. You know, as a fighter, I'll, I'll, be, I'll take the win because that's what I do. You know, I'm a fight. I'm going to take that win and we're on to the next, right? Either right. going to fix the problems we had then and on to the next. But um, if I was losing and I got a cut on someone, then yeah, I'm going to be a little disappointed in myself and I'm going to fix what I need to fix. Sure. But I'm going to take that win because I'm a fighter. But if it's the other way around, let's put it the other way around. Uh huh. You can still fight. Someone cuts you and you yeah. go, fuck that. I still want to fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would want to keep going, of w course. Would you feel like that would be needed to be implemented in Muay Thai now? Like, hey, if the fighter can fight and it, it's not cut too terribly, oh, I then keep going. Yeah, it has to. It, okay. it should be. And, and, and most referees and, and doctors knows in, some of the, in, in California and stuff like that, it's getting better. It's getting better. I, I, I'm not going to lie. There is some work that needs to be done in the judging and refereeing with understanding Muay Thai, you know, actually That was your President Obama statement about yeah. Muay Thai. <laughs> uh, uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely for, for the sport. Because you got to understand, right, if these judges and referees don't know what they're doing or they don't know, understand how to judge Muay Thai and we got an MMA or a karate judge judging Muay Thai or a boxing judge even judging Muay Thai, they're not going to understand the point system. They're not going to understand the elbows. They're not going to understand the knees. So they're not scoring them, right? Sure. So as a Muay Thai Thai fighter, I'm using all my weapons, right? I'm not just using my hands. I'm not just using my kicks, my, my knees. I'm using the clinch, the elbows. Every, sure. I'm using my eight limbs. And if a judge doesn't know how to judge that, then that can be critical to us because we move on to by more wins we get. We get more opportunities by the wins we get. And if I'm losing because of the judge and I did my part in my fight and I, and I felt like I won that fight, then I feel like it's taken away from the sport as well, you know? Right, and, and a lot of judges don't realize if you're – if you're dope with boxing, you're checking kicks, and then you're housing them in, 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 in the clinch, that's a variety yes. yeah. of expertise, or, or at least in technique. Mm -hmm. You know, so. What's real Muay Thai? I, I, I'll, I'll say it. You don't have to say it. I, I thought, I love Cecil Peoples. Um, not his position to judge that fight. Uh, I love MMA judges, uh -huh. but you have to see the technicality. I'll, I'll put it this way. If you dump someone and it takes them a while to get up versus you getting dumped and then you stand up right mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. you got to factor that. Yeah, 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 definitely. You got to factor that. Especially when mine was that. an illegal dump. He gave me an illegal Correct. Dump. And that's, that's the thing about it. So we're to, we're, let's go to my fight now. I honestly felt like I won. You know, I should have been sure. a two-time national champ, WBC champ in two different weight classes. I felt I won. I felt I won. One through four guaranteed. I even rewatched the fight because I want to see what the heck did the judges see. Because if some if someone voted that I didn't win that fight, then obviously I maybe didn't do enough for me to prove to everybody in that seat. Because as a fighter, that's what I want to do. I right. want everybody in those seats, everybody in that arena, knowing I won that fight. And if somebody felt like I didn't, then then I need to go back and fix things and, and work on things or get it better, right? Me and crew together, okay? And my team, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I went back and I watched and I felt I won that fight. And that's why I was telling you is. And it, just, it's, it hasn't just happened to me. It happened to a couple other people recently, and it's still happening now. And a, even in the amateur Muay Thai LC, I, I've been at these shows. It's like, what were they watching, you know? Right. I just feel like they need to get educated and really understand the Muay Thai. I also feel that it will help the sport if we get somebody, like even retired fighters, coaches, those guys into, into the commission and into the judging and refing where, we, where they actually understand the sport. It, it's it's going to help it grow and the right way and judge, yes, and update it, exactly. Exactly. You, you know, and you, they should have like a class understanding on what they're doing. They might have it now, but they should actually make them sit through them, not just one class and then boom, you're a referee and a judge and sign this license or pay for this. Like, you know, they need to be educated. They need to be taught. I almost feel like at minimum, at least do pad work to, to see the entries, mm -hmm. the, the level of difficulty of, yeah. of getting a clinch against someone who fights well exactly. in the pocket. Or working the elbows in the clinch and all that, working Correct. the tosses. It's a lot of technique to go involved in that. Because you, you, you throw that elbow in the clinch, and if one, one foot's up, bump, yep. you're done. Exactly, exactly. Do you feel any itch to delve into MMA or boxing? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I would. Okay. I would love to go into. Oh. I, I like to fight. Which and one? I love first? to test myself. Whichever one pays the most, to be ah, honest. <laughs> you got to box, dude. You got to set it up for Start the right. Start throwing money into the camera. Yeah, yeah. Boxing, boxing, I think, would be great, too. Um, MMA, too. Whichever one right now, for me, is Muay Thai. My focus right now is Muay Thai right now. Just fight as much as we can. Let's, me and crew, we try to go internationally, collect as much belts as we can, and, and then we'll take it from there. Maybe we get more opportunities down the line. You know what I mean? Sure. But I have, I've done amateur boxing back when I was younger, 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 before I ran into Muay Thai and I love boxing um, now I'm fighting in April and it's gonna be a kickboxing match so I'll be able to use a lot more uh, hands and long and, range and my low kick so I don't have to worry about the clinch and the knees as much so uh, we're gonna go into that and then we'll go from there I would love to be on glory um, Bellator and and those other great promotions out there you know so how does your training change then when it's just kickboxing and no clinch a lot of boxing a lot of kicks. mostly boxing center uh -huh, a lot of boxing a lot of kicks uh, we still work our knees because we got our long range knees and everything. You right. Know? Uh, but a lot of boxing, a lot of kicks and movement, you know. It's kind of like you'd ha you have to move a lot, you have to set it up, you know, for that kickboxing. And it's a faster pace, you know. It's not the Thai style, so it's three rounds. First round. It's right, first round, right into it, you know. Right, right into it, you know. And we know what we got to do. We got to go to work and we know we're going to China and, and uh, it's a little tough out there with the judging. So we're, 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 going, to, we're going and we're going to be prepared. Let know? me ask you, like the most recent news from pride uh or one fc is uh -huh. a chinese fighter died trying to make weight yeah yeah do you feel fighters should just fight as close as possible within five to ten pounds of their walking weight or is it still that guy was just terrible at trying to make weight at that at that moment for that fight um i feel if you want for me I mean, how, how much long, I, I don't care. If a fighter can make the weight and he's bigger than me, we're going to fight. He made the weight, he did it. But then again, I feel like you are, you're not going to be able to last as long in your career. You're taking a toll on your body. Sure. You're thrashing your body completely. So how long am I, I mean, yeah, you might be able to be the bigger, stronger fighter for those couple fights or the year or so on, but then it it's going to take a toll. Later on, I'm not going to be able to cut that easy. Now I got to fight in a higher weight class, which mostly happens. Uh, but I feel like, if they make the weight, let them fight, whoever. I mean, I mean, you know me, Charles, I fought different weight classes. I fought yeah. freaking almost every, even as an amateur, you know, uh, from heavy to Walter weight, you know what I mean? So, but. Um, Is 160 your favorite weight? 154. 154. I'm actually going to go to 47 where I should be. I feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after these couple two fights, we're going to finish up here and then uh, I want to drop to uh, 47. That's my goal. What do you think of. When you fight someone at 147, so do you do you change like do you, is there an area of caution when you fight someone 147 because they're speedier? Uh, yeah. In nature, or and do you walk walk them down like a la Floyd and then hey, I'm gonna get you at my my range. Every fighter is different, so sure. I can't go in there like I'm gonna walk down every fighter because I'm 147. There's some big 147s out there, you know, even taller and bigger than me. You know what I mean? Right. And. Uh, um, I'll, I'll take it as a first round and give what he gives me. You know what I mean? We'll see. We'll fill it out. Either I'm going to... I like to put the pressure and come forward on the fighter because if I feel like I'm going to get them more tired, it gives them open up. But I don't like to come straight in. I don't want to be an easy target, you know? If I come straight in, I'm going to get hit whatever he throws at me. Um, but, yeah, so we fill it out. Every fighter is different. You know what I mean? Every, some fighters hate the pressure. Some fighters enjoy the pressure where they can work good counters off it. So you got to be able to decide how, which way I'm going to go during that first round. That's why kind of the first round, you kind of fill it out. For this kickboxing match, I really can't. It's three rounds, so you got to go in there right away. It's not Boom. a five-rounder, you know? Right you away. You got to get in there and, and go to work, you know? And hopefully it works our way. <laughs> well, what do you think about fighters who just do conditioning and sparring versus the fighters who add weightlifting? Because, you know, it's common for both the brown folks, Filipinos and yeah. Latinos, to not lift as much, but the conditioning is there. Yeah, yeah, see, um, I'm gonna be honest, I, I never really got into lifting until the last maybe year and a half now. Okay. And I've actually, I actually feel stronger, I'm not slower, and, and it actually prevented a lot of stuff from my, inj my injuries that I had of getting hurt again, you know? So I feel like it's great, but to an extent, we got, uh, us as fighters, we gotta lift different. We're not gonna lift like a body lifter, you know? And we gotta use, explosive power energy right. so different type of weights you know what i'm saying like with the ropes um i like to work with my strength coach my q but he it's explosive you know we're doing cardio weights right different types of weights with the 
with the sandbags, ball slams, all that, the ropes, you know what I mean? So I'm still building power here, here, hips to hips. I'm still, it's just, he's incorporating powers that we're using in the ring. How I'm throwing my punches, how I'm tossing, how I'm throwing, you know, the hook from the kicks, from the elbows, right. from the jump squats to make the higher jump knees and stuff like that, you know? Uh, and you still, I feel like you should lift a little bit, you know? Just not like a body lifter, but I feel like to stay strong and stay healthy, you should. For our bones, we put our body through a lot of work, a lot of punishment, you know? And for it, you to stay healthy and longer, I feel like you need to be stronger too. Like uh, when the Diaz brothers fight, you know, they normally, they, they're just triathletes. Yeah. And they, Train and spar. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Did you think Connor was gonna win that fight? Um, I'm, I, I uh, me and crew <laughs> actually had a bet, and I thought oh, okay. that Diaz would would uh, I thought Diaz would uh be able to beat him. I just didn't know if he would go past the first round or so because of his cardio on 11 days, right? Right. But I guarantee I was actually feeling really good about Diaz being Connor. I feel like Connor had a lot of hype. Um. I think he's okay, but I think uh, Chad Mendes exposed a lot of stuff about his takedown defense, and Diaz was just a beast on the ground, I felt like, you know? I mean, it just wows his boxing. I think Connor should have used his leg kicks a little bit more, and it would have sure. slowed him down a little bit. He, Diaz didn't block one. He never really does. Um, but, uh, yeah, I felt that Diaz would, could win that fight. I, I also thought, like, he was expending way too much energy. Doing that spinning oh, yeah. kick, oh, yeah. if I'd hung. Well, not only that, he was loading up on all his shots, you know? The first and he, round. And he looked real bigger. I mean, that weight, you got to understand, he went from 145, and now he's fighting at 170, and he didn't look, he looked like a solid 170, you know? Right. He wasn't a small 170, you know, where Nate Diaz looked a little more leaner at 70, you know? Right. Where his real weight is probably 155 for a good fight weight for him, you know what I mean? So um, the weight thing and so on, I thought it was a little weird, right? but he was very confident, you know? He's very confident, and he, he's a, he's, he knows how to market himself right. He's a smart man on Real that. Real well. You know? He's Real smart well. on that, you know? I just don't think he's fundamentally sound in all grounds, in all aspects of MMA, you know, which is the uh, stand-up, ground. Um, he likes to do a lot of that other stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, his mind, uh, his body tricks and stuff like that. That's good if it works for him, you know what I mean? But right. in fighting, you need, to, you need to train with the best and, f and work with the best, and you need to train straight fighting that's what playing i mean touch train. butt yeah i'm not here like some yoga do. Bar, you know what i mean yoga <laughs> i'm not saying yoga is not good for you because i feel it's like an it accessory helps, you know what i mean but that's training. not what i'm going to be working on during my camp i'm sorry what's your opinion on allowing elbows and knees on the ground like it's weird because the japanese they allow knees on the ground uh -huh. but for americans they allow elbows on the ground yeah yeah what well, what's more do you think that should be included for, for all aspects. Knees on the ground to the head while they're on the ground? I, I think that's more devastating than elbows. It is more devastating, it is. But they also probably gotta protect their fighters, so, you know. Uh, elbows will cut. Elbows will cut you open, and you'll right. get stitches, but I don't, uh, I think it's a lot more force with a knee to the head, a lot more trauma, you know what I mean? Do you think they should remove that? They don't have knees to the head, right? While they're on the ground no more? Uh, well, UFC? well, in Asia, in Pride, they, they, yeah. and one FC, yeah? they allow soccer kicks and knees on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. I think, Isn't uh, that terrible for us? I think, for our I fighters think we health? should remove that. I, think, I mean, you got to protect the fighters as well, you know what I mean? We're, right. not, we're not in a street fight. You know, we, we train to fight, but we're not in a street fight. It's still professional. We get paid for it. We train hard, and, and we go out there to entertain people, you know. But we don't want to kill each other either ourselves. I, during the fight, we kind of do, you know what I mean? We do want to kill each other. I want, I want to take the kid, the guy's head off. Right. But there's no hatred or anger towards Post it like fight. if it was. Exactly. What? MMA is different, though, you know what I mean? They know how to hype that up. Muay Thai is a lot more about respect. And now there's you still got... A lot of couple other young guys coming up and trying to make drama into it, which is, I mean, it, it's good for the sport. I, I think it's good. I think it's great. I mean, look what Joe Schilling is. He's a master at that shit. He's the man at, at creating drama and creating controversy so people can, can understand and get to know the sport. And honestly, I, that's why MMA does it. So then the people that don't understand Muay Thai, the they want to be like, oh, man, I want to see. They, they, they got beef with each other. I want to I wanna watch this. They're going to kill each other, you know? They got problems. Oh, do you hear them talking all this shit? I want to see these two guys, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it can help. But for me, that's just not the way I go. I, remember what I told you? I grew up a different way, so I feel like... You're gonna come at me like that. Dunzo. We'll take this in the street. We don't Dunzo. need to go in the ring. You know what I mean? And I, and and it's happened before with me and some other guy where he kind of thought he can come at me sideways, and it's like, let's go. And I, we we ran into each other in the back, and you know, out of town. We 
You know, we, we, we can go out. We don't need a green, you know. We got a problem with me, then we can go out right here. If you're going to play this, and it was a whole different game when we're face to face, but in front of the people, it's like, you know what I mean? So I, I don't respect that part of the factor. But I respect the part of the guys bringing it into a different level and try to market and bring more people into Muay Thai, let them understand it. So it's, uh, it helps. I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to react to it. Can you give me 10 more minutes? Yeah, of course. Okay, as cool. much team as you want. So time. this is my opinion, and check me on it uh -huh. if I'm wrong. I feel like jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai, those two, have a strong martial culture. Mm -hmm. Boxing and MMA doesn't. No. Yeah. It's plenty like beer bottle. Very right on, I think. I think you're right on. on Date that. your cousin martial uh -huh. arts kind uh -huh. of thing. Yes. Why do you think that is? Um, it's a tough one, right? That is a tough one. I think the way, uh, let's see, the structure in the background in the martial arts and what it represents, okay? What it holds, what, what, what I'm earning to get to, right? Um, and the way you present it right away, right? Your coach, you gotta have that respect in Muay Thai, you gotta why, same for Jiu Jitsu, you right. respect, also, you understand, right. also I, I come, I also, all that, you know? Um, where boxing, it's like, hey, you know, with um, MMA, same thing, you know, it's more like, hey, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna fight, you know what I mean? And also too, it involves with the people getting into the sport and who, understanding it right MMA they see right. these guys on TV and they like oh yeah I fight we get that here all the time in the gym oh I fight I want to fight oh you want to fight you ever fought before nah in the streets though you know a lot of times <laughs> in the streets oh really you have a lot of a lot of streets yeah I'm probably about 200 and no oh yeah 200 fights wow man yeah in the streets though all right you can take the class then can I spar you know, I want you're gonna take the class. You could do the class and just do just do the warm up and the cardio and the pad work, and you last through that, and we'll see where you're at. And then you can spar. Right. After the class, they're already done. You know what I mean? It's the when they and then they come and if they were able to spar and they get hit, it's like they freak out. Most of them, not all of them. Okay. So it's all it's all and then they're gone, right? And then plus the respect. Right when they come in here, we make sure that they understand what a why is, and you're gonna why to your crew, your crew meaning teacher, and you're gonna respect him. And you're gonna understand that you're gonna keep it 100% on here on that mat, sure. right? Where and MMA and boxing is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna train and I'm gonna kick someone's ass. You know what I mean? That's what I wanna do. I'm gonna go in there and kick someone's ass. Even when I'm at boxing gyms too, it's straight on. When we spar here, we spar hard sometimes coming up to fights, right? But in between the fights, we're working our technique and our timing, right? In boxing, you go on, every time I go to any boxing, um, sparring with some of the pros out there in different gyms, they're going hard. We're going hard 100%. We're, trying to, we're both trying to kill each other. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to go as hard as you're going to go. You're going to hit me hard, I'm going to hit you hard. You know what I mean? That's why you got to so, keep it calm. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's a, I, I feel like it's a, I'm going off schedule, but I feel like it's a different um, group of people in certain ways. You know what I'm saying? It, and then just what the teacher and what they bring to the to the sports you know what i mean in boxing they have some respect but it's just a uh, muay thai is martial arts jiu-jitsu is a martial arts um besides you know jiu-jitsu mma is not really a martial arts it's a fighting game right boxing right. is really a fighting game it's the you know? mix of yeah, it yeah you know and 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 respect to all of them because it helps a lot of us the ones that are starting really from nothing or like a poor man's game you know what i mean and it helps us get our way up we're always trying to find our way out you know for sure. I mean? Muay Thai, you ain't going to get rich, though. I'll tell you that right now. You can oh, work your way up. It's a and passion. you can hustle hard. You can make a living. For me, I'm making a living through teaching, my privates, and then, of course, the fights now. It's helping with extra money and, you know, so on and so on. But you, you also got to know what your worth, your worth is, too, I feel like. I feel right. like a lot of these fighters settle for so little, and then it doesn't help us in any way. You know what I mean? Like, how... I'm a, why am I going to pay you this when I just paid my main event this and then you're asking me for this much money, you know what I mean? That, I think that's the biggest, excuse my language, fuck up with like sports fighting. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like the promotional crews have to treat it like a league. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You got to groom your athletes. Yes, yes. And the more healthier they are and the more they can fight, the more you have dynamic shows. Look at the NBA. Oh, yeah. Someone gets into the league, it's like, well, if you're not ready yet, here's the D-League. Mm-hmm. If you're plenty good, you know, let's pay them. Yeah. If you win a ring or if you, win a, if you win a playoff series, here's a little bit of a bonus. Exactly. And that's my biggest beef with, well, it's also prominent with, like, jiu-jitsu, but, like, with, like, primarily boxing and Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put you on blast right now. Uh-huh. Real easy, okay? Let's do Real it. easy. Kevin Ross, Joe Schilling. Which one? Which one do who, I prefer? Who do you choose? Yes. Joe Schilling. Why is that? 
I've known him longer. <laughs> oh, okay. I've known him. We kind of. I've known him for a long time. But not only that, um, he's explosive. He's exciting. He knocks out people. He finishes a lot of fights. People like finishes, right? Um, he has a attitude. He has a charisma where people either they hate him or they love him, right? Even if a person hates you, they're gonna watch you because they want to see you lose. If they love you, they're gonna watch you because they support you, right? Right. So he's a good draw. That's a good draw. My life pet or bull cow? Bull cow, definitely. Why bull cow? He's the one of the best out there right now for the ties. Even though I feel like he should fight a little bit more ties, he's or some ties at all. Um, but he's the best. He's the best. He's one of the best out there. One of the best. There's a couple of few ties out there that are top notch. Uh, this is not so much a non-blast thing, but I wanted to get your opinion on this. If Gus D'Amato doesn't pass, where does Mike Tyson go? Where does Mike Tyson go? Because I feel like if Gus D'Amato yeah. didn't die to yeah. the moon. I mean, man, I feel, yeah, there would have been so much more for him, so much more. He had a lot of promise. And when he lost Gus, it was like he lost a part of his heart. That was the only man that he had given him any guidance or believed in him, you know what I'm saying? So it just took a part of him and he didn't know how to act. Gus kept him in shape, in line, you know? And as a fighter, as a fighter, you know, we, we go hard in everything we do, right? We go hard in training, most of us, not all of us, okay? I see a lot of us live that straight Crazy on life. arrow and then some of us, you know, we like to have fun too right. as well, right? And uh, when we do, we go hard. It's just like you go hard in training, you know, give it 110%. When you go out and party, you're going hard 110%. When you go with your friends, certain things like that, where Gus was that balance, you know? Okay, yeah, you won that fight, have fun, but now let's get back to work, you know what I mean? No, and then he had problems, he would talk to him. There was a lot of stability for his mental side, I feel like, and it could have went, pfft. Yeah, he's one of the greatest right now, till this day, but it would have been longer and longer, more and more, you know? I probably, I don't know what, I don't know how many more titles, how many more years he would have been, you know, undisputed. Yeah, it just feels like he could have been that comet. Yeah. He could have exactly. been like right up there with Ali. Yeah, uh huh, right there. You know, right, yeah. right up there. Uh, to close, though this may air after the fight, who do you, uh, how much effect is Teddy Atlas for Timothy Bradley? I mean, I, I, I'm scared for. I know this is his for last Pacquiao, fight. Yeah, me too. But me too. I, I feel like Bradley's going to win this one. I, man. I feel it. He's just a whole new Bradley. I mean, you've seen the other fight, right? You've seen his last fight? Yeah. Yeah, against uh, Brandon Rios. Man, dominating, you know? He's just, he, he's there too, mentally. Um, I think Teddy has, has done really good with Timothy Bradley, for sure. He, um, and I love Pacquiao. <laughs> I'm a Pacquiao I love him fan too, too you I know? love him too. Um, but I like boxing too. So I'm a fan of boxing, and I, um, but I think uh, Pacquiao better be careful of this fight. But I know Freddie Roach and Justin Fortune will get them ready. You know, I've known I've known Justin since I was a kid. You know? I think he's underrated. Justin Fortune? Yeah. Oh, definitely. He's he is one of the best trainers I know. I've worked with him on a personal level. Mid works everything right now. He's really busy, so I wish I had some more time to work with him. But uh, yeah, he's definitely underrated. He doesn't get the, as much respect as he needs, but he is a very well coached too boxing and strength and conditioning and a good just a good man you know what I mean That's so I know cool. they're gonna get them ready both of them I know uh, Freddie Roach is excellent coach very smart guy and Justin Fortune Pacquiao will be ready too but yeah Timothy Bradley is a little bit more dangerous now so where can people get a hold of you uh, just at Sidia Tong do you have like an Instagram or Twitter yeah, I have Instagram I have uh, um, Josh Aragon uh, I'm Josh Gato Aragon um, Josh underscore Gato Aragon and then my Facebook. I am also have my website going up in about four days. It's going to be a great website going up. Um, and then I'm here at Seattle all day. This and they, and they could and train. reach you and you could train yeah. people privately. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Both all. just for self-defense, MMA. Do yeah, that's what I do now. I, I teach privates. Um, I have a good clientele. It's been able to, you know, let me survive, me and my family. Um, and teaching classes and then training. This is what I do full time. This is all I do now. That's dope, so man. I, I'm, I'm trying just to take it to the next level, trying to stay as busy as possible. And uh, I want to be the best, the world champ, not just a champ. I want to be the world champ, the best champ, you know? And, and it takes work, it takes dedication and sacrifice. And that's what right now we're doing and we're willing to do more and more of. Dude, thank you so much, Appreciate brother. Appreciate it, my man. Thank Appreciate you, it, man.